Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Monday, November 4th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 12 through 15. Brethren, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For God is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 15, and verses 22 through 31. Let us be attentive. At that time, while Jesus was teaching, one of the multitude said to him, Teacher, bid my brother divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? And he said to them, Take heed, and beware of all covetousness. For a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat, nor about your body, what you shall put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a cubit of his span of life? If, then, you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O men of little faith? Do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be of anxious mind. For all the nations of the world seek these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, Seek his kingdom, and these things shall be yours as well. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. If you forgive me, I would like to indulge in a little bit of a reminiscence about why I became Orthodox. One of the greater things about our faith is its resilience. Think about the entire history of Christianity. We start back in the time of our Lord and then the apostles and almost immediately upon this burgeoning church fell a great persecution. The state resented the church for numerous reasons. On one hand, it accused the church of cannibalism. On another hand, it accused them of being traitors. And so by all intents, the church was doomed from its beginning, destined to suffer, and to suffer profoundly. But the reality is the church managed to endure. Even in the midst of great persecution, it survived. And, for the most part, it remained aloof from the patterns that went on in the general culture. It answered all the accusations that it needed to answer. It provided theological explanations and definitions when questions arose from the community outside the church regarding things like the nature of God, the divinity of the Son, the role of the church, the Holy Spirit. These kinds of things were answered by the church carefully, succinctly, and definitively. But the church managed to stay aloof 
from the politics of the age. Now, granted, it had several times when you could not separate the empire from the church. But in the time of the Romans, the church remained aloof until the 4th century. And then almost 300 years later, with the rise of Islam, you have the church surviving, maybe not flourishing the way it used to, but still surviving sufficiently in Muslim-dominated countries and regions. Think even more recently to the not-so-distant past, when we think of the beginnings of the 20th century, we have communist Russia, and then the increase of the Soviet Union. And within that union, you had many countries that were orthodox by nature. And no matter how hard the government tried to shut it down, to repress it, it still managed to flourish. Maybe not to the same degree that it did when it wasn't being persecuted, but it still managed to survive. Here we are today. And so that is one of the things that I found so attractive about the faith because it didn't matter. The church remained resilient. It didn't matter how the government was dealing with the church. In fact, there were times when it seemed that the church was in greater trouble when it was in unison with the government around it. Maybe we run into those kinds of problems today. I don't know. But what really matters here is that by placing our faith where it truly belongs, there is nothing that the world can do that would cause us to falter or fall. There will always be a remnant, always be an old grandmother who has a picture of a potted plant on one side and flip it over, there's an icon of the mother of God on the other. When it was time to pray, she'd flip the picture so that it showed the icon. And then when she was done, she'd flip it back around so that her, her house was inspected. What they would find is a painting of a potted plant. The church can survive in all sorts of different and interesting circumstances. And so we hear today's gospel reading and we are, we are reminded that if God is going to provide for the ravens of the air and for the field flowers, how much more will he provide for us the crowning achievement of his creation, the ones born and stamped in the image of God and, and hoping one day to join in his likeness? How much more will we be protected, watched over, encouraged? That does not mean that martyrs' blood won't be spilled, but it does mean that God promises that he will never ever abandon us, that he will remain with us. Now let's be clear about something. The cause of sin in orthodoxy isn't the breaking of a law. It's trying to replace God with something that we would do ourselves. You see, because in the orthodox church, it's not sin came into the world and therefore we all deserve to die. No, it's that corruption came into the world and we get so panicked about our mortality and our corruption that we think that we have to do it ourselves. And as a result, we sin. We take the place of God. We remove him and we put ourselves in his place. And this is the great mystery of God. Sometimes he will resist this. Sometimes he will correct us. But most of the time, he lets us do it because our God does not compel. He doesn't force us to love him. He wants us to love him freely, unconstrained. And this is the great understanding of our faith. If we fall, it's because we are trying to take the place of God. We're putting ourselves in that their judgment seat. We're doing the things that God alone should be doing. And when we do choose that, almost invariably, suffering comes as a result. So, consider indeed the lilies of the field. Consider the ravens of the air. Consider just how much God really loves us. And in light of that, act. And yes, make decisions 
based on the understanding that we are indeed God's people and that God will provide. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll address them as soon as I can. And may God bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. And thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great day. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.